So guys, yet again, leftist Twitter is unhappy and angry and furious about Suella Braverman. This comes after she made this speech at the National Conservative at some conference in uh, DC, Washington. So here's a clip. Far, far too many Tory politicians agreed and still agree that the progress flag must be flown to be kind, to be inclusive. It shows how liberal and progressive we are. And that's what many conservatives want us to be. Well, the progress flag says to me, it says to me one monstrous thing, that I was a member of a government that presided over the mutilation of our children in our hospitals and from our schools. Now, Paul Brand from ITV says, Suella Braverman's speech in Washington this evening contains a blistering attack on pro-LGBT Tories. She says the progressive pride flag has been flown on government buildings as if marking, quote, unoccupied territory, unquote, accusing Tory colleagues of supporting a, quote, horrible political campaign which supports the, quote, mutilation of children and leaves her, again, quote, physically repulsed. This is arguably some of the most inflammatory language used by an MP about any LGBT issue since the 1980s. Now we've also got Ian Dale from this thing called LBC, some sort of irrelevant news channel, but he was the same guy that was threatening to turn the microphone off of the Heritage Party leader, David Curtin, after he said a little bit of truth about the Ukraine war. He wasn't very happy about that. The best model of a family is a mother and a father who stay together, they're married and they bring up their own kids. I'll cut your microphone outcomes. if you don't shut up. In he says, oh, what a disgusting speech and she seriously thinks she has a chance of leading the Conservative Party. Not while I have a breath left in my body. Moderate conservatives need to stand up and be counted. This will not stand. Of course, that's ridiculous. Moderate conservatives? There's no such thing. It's like saying moderate leftists. What do you mean a moderate leftist? You cannot be moderate and a leftist. You cannot be moderate and right wing. It doesn't make sense. The whole point of a political leaning is the fact that you stand for something. So if you stand for one thing, then you must be against another. If you love one thing, then you must hate another. Now, what exactly was disgusting or shameful about this speech? Why did they see it as hateful? She's simply against it being hung on government buildings. This is not a personal attack on any gay person. This is not a personal attack on any trans person. This is just against it being the state agenda because that is what a flag is. If you get to choose any flag to hang and you make it the progressive pride flag, well, you are saying that this is the state agenda. Now, unfortunately, the flag no longer stands for tolerance and inclusivity and acceptance. It stands, it does in fact stand for child mutilation and child grooming and the movement might not actually be for that but what has happened is that the 20%, the radical 20% of the LGBT mob have ruined it for the rest of you. Now perhaps you could have saved face a little bit if the other 80% openly condemned these people yet you don't so it almost looks like you're totally happy of what they're doing because there are the radical people who push the whole drag queen stuff. There are radical people who are okay with, you know, naked men going around on bikes whilst little five-year-old kids watch. That is the radical 15, 20%. I know it's not all of you. However, most of you have not condemned it. So now that that is the face of LGBT, that is now the face of your movement, when you now fly that flag, people view the flag that way. So should that flag be hung on government buildings, perhaps you need to fix your reputation first. Perhaps you have to seem less radical actually make it about inclusivity and tolerance and not division, not extremist, because that is how your movement now seems to the vast majority of people. Because he, here's the thing, so a state will always have an agenda, whether it's family, whether it's Christianity, whether it's country and nationalism, or in this case, it could be butt sex. Is butt sex wrong? Well, I don't think it's purposeful. I think it's hedonistic. Do you engage in butt sex? No, of course not. Okay. You can't reproduce and make beautiful children from butt sex. So there's no reason to do it with a man or a woman. I mean, if, if you're having butt sex with girls, you're basically gay to me. Now, the state agenda should be, as democracy suggests, representative of the people. Butt sex isn't representative of the people. It's representative of a very, very small minority of people. So to me, that would almost seem unrepresentative and therefore undemocratic. For example, the state agenda of maybe Serbia, for example, is family and religion. So what do they do? They have family pride marches where you get married couples with their kids and their the grandparents, everyone, to go and march around because, well, the agenda of, this, of that country is family. So the state agenda should be encouraging something positive. Family is objectively a positive thing for yourself, 
for the future generations, for your future society and for your country as a whole. Again, butt sex isn't. It is purposeless. It is just hedonism. It, is, it contributes zero to society. And whether you want to admit it or not, when, the, when there is an agenda, it is being pushed on people. It is an encouragement. It is not simply acceptance. When the Islamic nations have statues and symbolism of their prophets and all of this stuff, well, guess what? Yes, they are encouraging it, as I said with the Serbia and the family. By doing that, they are in fact promoting family. So you also have to admit when you fly pride flags, that when you hang pride flags from government buildings and you're making it, this is the state agenda. And by extension, you are promoting the LGBT movement. So what flag should we be hanging from the government buildings? What would be truly inclusive? Because hanging a flag of minorities on a government building is not inclusive. Because to be inclusive, you cannot exclude people. The LGBT flag excludes about 95% of the entire country's population. So what flag should you fly? Well, it's pretty obvious. The flag of Great Britain, the Union Jack. The flag of England, the flag of Scotland, the flag of Northern Ireland and Wales. That is the flags that should be hung from the government buildings. That is representative of the people of this country. And I'd say that is what true acceptance is about. To say that everyone of this country is equal because we all are unified by one thing. The fact that we are British. That flag includes gay people. It does. That flag includes trans people. The flag includes everybody. The least divisive, the most inclusive flag is simply the flag of our country, of our nation. It also encourages people to serve their country. And when I say serve a country, I mean serve your community, serve your people. It focuses on building communities. It focuses on love. It encourages you that if someone is of our great nation, that we respect them, that we tr always treat them equally and fairly. And again, as I said about, if you love something, you must be against the other. If you're pro one thing, then you must be anti something else. This is not stemming from me being anti-LGBT. This is simply because I'm pro-Britain and I don't want a divided nation. If we simply forget about all these different communities, forget, honestly, forget the LGBT community, just abandon the entire thing. Simply say, I am British and I love my country and people. If you did that, honestly, I think most of our problems would be solved. I think there would be much less political discourse and arguments and bitterness and resentment from each other. Because again, we'd be united under the fact that we are Brits. I truly think that this, this should be something we should all get behind. So it's not really about taking down the LGBT flags, and it's more about replacing them with the flag of Great Britain.